so you know what we're going to do. We're going to have this talk. And also, at some points, because today's theme is what? The theme is devotee care. So we are actually uh, Amala Manjari Mataji, um, Yomine Shri Mataji, um, Supriya Mataji. Um, you know, we have a current UK disciples care coverage and they're going to do a report on that. So we're going to also fit that in as well. So, but first of all, let's hear from His Grace Mahavra Prabhu. Looks like we are sitting higher than Krishna Balaram, <laughs> feeling a little weird here. Om Ajnana Tamiranda Shya Gyananjana Salakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Sri Matijaya Pataka Swami Niti Namine Nama Acharya Padaya Nita Kripa Pradayine Gaurakata Gamadaya Nagra Gramatarine Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Sri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesa Sunyavadi Paschatya Desatarine Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadar Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Brindam Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare Manjakal Patarabhyosya Kripa Sindhu Bhayavacha Patitanam Pavane Pyo Vaishnave Pyo Namo Namaham So I'll try to stick to the theme today as much as possible and we'll relate some of the pastimes which are also close to the themes. <coughs> as Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur have said that this Namaruchi, Jiva Doya and Vaishnava Seva, this is the Sarva Dharma Sa, the essence of all religion. And we can, we have seen that the followers or the Acharyas of Gaudiya Vaishnavas in the line of Gaudiya Vaishnavism, they do practice the same principle of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. These are the main principle of Lord Chaitanya, which he preached and practiced. And all his followers, they do follow the same. In fact, our Krishna, this Krishna conscious movement, our whole International Society for Krishna Consciousness is based on this. More than 500 years ago, more than 500 years ago, Advaita Acharya, because he doesn't want to see the conditioned souls suffer anymore because of the compassion. Out of compassion, he called, requested Lord Chaitanya to come down. And that's Jiva Doya, because out of compassion for the living entities. And it goes down and down all the way up to Prabhupada. If you see Srila Prabhupada did the same, because he knew these conditioned souls are suffering. So he took all the trouble at that age of 70 to go to the US to start this Krishna conscious movement. So our entire parampara, the whole Gaudiya Vaishnava parampara is based on this Jiva Daya, compassion. Out of compassion, they have done all this. And because I'm associated quite closely with um, 
Guru Maharaj. So I'll share some of the pastimes, how he is also following the same footstep as Srila Prabhupada and all the previous Acharyas. Before that, I'll just update you something on his, uh, some little uh, details on his health. Just before coming, uh, just before coming here, we were in uh, Russia and then in Dubai and in Malaysia and then before that we were in uh, Mayapur for a month. While he was in Mayapur for a month, he had, uh, he celebrated Janmashtami, Radhashtami and uh, was a regulated uh, lifestyle in Mayapur. At least in Mayapur we will uh, able to put him on bed by 10 at night, 10, between 10 to 10.30. So that's a great achievement actually, because in Mayapur after 8, 9 o'clock, the whole Mayapur becomes complete silent, no move, not much of activities. So in that way, we were able to put him on bed by 10, 10.30. But at the moment, his health is quite stable, though we always have some ups and downs now and then. And one of the, there are two major issues in regards to his health, though they are maintained, somewhat maintained, and they are, look stable, but you can, I mean, you may not know, anything can happen at any time, but we always have some ups and downs, as I said, and he has two major problems. One is his weak liver, and he's also weak kidney. And because of his weak liver, he accumulates a lot of fluid in the abdomen not in the belly, not in the bag, but in between the organs. So, just right after Radhasmi, we went to Malaysia, and in Malaysia, from Malaysia, we're supposed to go to Singapore, Dubai, Russia, then UK, but then I have to, we have to cancel the program in Singapore, because we have to admit him in the hospital, because by then he has already accumulated more than 15 liters of fluid in his belly. 15 liters and we have to remove 11 liter in Malaysia. We removed about 11 liters just to, for him to make him comfortable so that he can complete this entire journey because otherwise it's impossible to just to move around with, imagine it's like you're carrying a baby. <laughs> 15 liters of, I mean how much a baby weighs, I mean new baby, three kilos maximum. This one, just the fluid alone, 15 liters of fluid. And because of that, I mean, it's not only on, in the belly, also on the legs. Because naturally when uh, you have a high pressure, legs also swells up. So probably another three to, four, I mean more than about five liters on each legs. So this is the main um, challenges, health challenges or main issue that he has in regards to his health, accumulation of fluid. Otherwise, the rest of the other issues are pretty much stable and we are, the doctor's team, they are really working on that, taking good care of that. But the major challenge for now is accumulation of fluid. But the beauty is, he doesn't really bother about this that in Malaysia, right after tapping, 11 liter of fluid in two days, then the doctor said, I think uh, Swamiji, you have to stay back, for at least you take it because I think some of you, those who are here doctors, you know, after, flu uh, after removing such big amount of fluid from your body, you need to stabilize yourself because otherwise your body, uh, your parameters can go haywire. So they wanted to keep him, to monitor him closely. But then he said, no, no, I wanted to, I mean, he said, discharge me, I wanted to fly tomorrow <laughs> to uh, Dubai for the Radha Yatra. And we know, I mean, despite of uh, the medical advice, he said, I wanted to go. Then we discharged him on the 6th of September. Then from the temp uh, hospital, he went straight to the temple. He said, I want to take darshan. So he went there and naturally there were a lot of devotees. So then darshan became an evening program, gave class. Then he went back to his residence. 
we took rest. The next day we flew to um, Dubai. So <clears throat> that's one thing. I mean, that's the one of the major challenge he has, or health issue he has. And even now, if you see, he easily has seven to eight liters of fluid in his belly, and probably three liters on his legs. We do some measurement every day. We always uh, take note of the progress of the accumulation of the fluid and report to the doctors. And you know, being in this condition, I don't know how many of you know or uh, you have thought about it, being in this condition of completely uh, dependent on others for every single thing, not able to walk on his own, and having so much of fluid in his, you know, I mean his whole body is carrying so much of water. Uh, to travel is not an easy task. To travel by plane, it's not an easy task. Especially, the biggest challenge is to take him to the toilet, washroom, on, on a longer flight. It's such a task. So much so, sometimes when I see him, I mean, how he suffers, uh, going to the toilet or even uh, sh shifting him from uh, one seat to another seat, from one place to another place. Sometimes, a couple of times even I have, I got really upset and <laughs> screamed at him a couple of times because just seeing him, how he suffers, once I just told him, why you have to do like this, just stay in my poor and you know, because just not able to bear how he, seeing him, how he really takes so much of pain and difficulties just to travel and go and meet devotees, attending programs. So, a couple of times, you know, even I was, it is sometimes becomes unbearable to see how he goes through all this pain. And I, I mean, as I said, once I've even screamed, like, I was just expressed by screaming at him, like, you know, why you have to do this? Just stay in Mayapur. Why you have to travel? You know, going through so much of pain. Especially, we have a couple of like, like Hollywood movie experience. Sometimes the flight will be about to land. They will announce, okay, you can't use the toilets anymore. We are, about, we are descending now. And he'll say, I need to go and use the toilet. Like, that's the biggest anxiety we go through. <laughs> like, you know, the challenge of taking him to the toilet and bring him back. That's another big, big challenge. So it's not an easy task. Being in his condition to travel, it's not an easy task. Because you know how big is the toilet in the plane. And we need at least minimum two people to be with him, to take him in and out. Unlike... Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's a big task. I mean, we have, we'll sometimes some, I mean, uh, some airlines, most of the airlines, they will have the small wheelchair, but you know, that wheelchair is like probably as big as this. And he's so big, you have to like squeeze him into on, on that wheelchair and then you have to move him to the, close to the toilet. And then we have, you know, either me or mostly Haridas Prabhu, they'll have him, like hug him like this. You have to lift him up by having his hand around our neck and then you lift him up. And one person has to move in, like, you know, you hug each other and you just move into the toilet like this. So that's, you know, uh, that is just a glimpse of, you know, what he goes through for traveling and uh, coming, I mean, going around just to meet devotees, for his preaching. It's not, a, not, not easy at all, especially when his legs swells up, he can hardly, there are a couple of times where we had difficulties to even move his leg. He was not able to move his leg at all, especially when you sit and travel for too long and with so much of uh, water in your legs, swell, legs are swelled up like anything. And we have to like two people holding him and one person has to sit down and move his leg like, psh. <laughs> you have to do that sometimes. That has happened a couple of times and especially when he's really tired. But somehow, you know, though his physical body is deteriorating, or, yeah, let it, uh, deteriorating, 
and his subtle body his mind his intelligence and uh, you know his mood they are always on the spiritual platform so it's always a, a fight between the subtle body and the physical body because physical body is going in one direction and the subtle body is going in another direction so he has to he has to drag the physical body according to his mood and desire on to serve shila prabhupada so that's what uh, one of the biggest challenge we face and uh, one of the main issue that he has now the accumulation of fluid and other than that also a couple of times uh, dot some dot is they approached me and they asked me that <coughs> uh, how's that possible for you that uh, what inspires you so much that you stay with him and carry on doing this service for many years i told them it is nothing special about me it is nothing special about me that uh, or i have something special that i can stick to him or stick to the service it's actually it's him it's him who's actually inspiring us to stay with him because i don't know how many of you have an experience of uh, taking care of physically challenged persons how many of you have ever have experienced taking care of physically challenged people or bedridden you know it is not easy it's mentally and physically very challenging but in our group in our the servants the caretakers group most of them are still there like since 2008 they're still there most of them and even if you tell them to leave the service they will not leave they still very inspired to stay on and do the service that's because it's not because we are special it's because he is special guru maharaj is special he knows how to really take good care of us he always inspires because his qualities his qualities are inspiring us he lives based on this principle vaishnav seva jeeva doya and namaruchi he lives his whole life is based on these principles because we have seen how like even being in this condition where he has to completely depend on others to take care of him yet even being in this condition he still cares for other people we are just coming from moscow and in moscow we had one we met one couple who had a they went through they're going through in fact going through a difficult time with their relationship young couple and as a small boy and this devotee i engaged him in guru maharaj service and he was explaining to guru maharaj how he's going through all this uh, you know bitter experience with his um, with his um, wife then on the then one evening uh we flew down from jay hari krishna maharaj one evening we flew down from uh, we flew down from krasnodar south russia to moscow and after arriving in moscow this dot was already serving in uh, south russia with us for almost a week then we flew down to moscow as soon as we arrived in moscow this devotee's wife came to meet him then there was some new new exchanges between him and his wife and that night after putting guru maharaj to bed after putting him to bed uh, that was like around 11 at night and this particular devotee he was in the night shift he was with guru maharaj taking care of him during the night then around 1:15 he called me he came to my room and he called me gurma she wanted to go to the toilet so then we quickly rushed put him on the commode then we took him into the toilet and he was as soon as we entered the toilet he was sitting and then he was talking to this devotees giving him all the good advice on how to take care or uh, repair the relationship between his him and his wife <laughs> that went on for almost half an hour <laughs> 
and i was like so sleepy and uh, i was just sitting in one corner of the toilet but he was sitting on this commode he was just advising this devotee for almost 30 minutes till 1:45 about how to you know re- repair the relationship so this devotee then we came out we put him on his bag i mean put him on a slip then this devotee came back to my room he is supposed to stay in his guru maharaj room but he came to my room then he started crying he say he was saying that i mean he knows he knows more than me you know like he has so much of experience on how to guide grihasthas to how to you know uh, have a good relationship among each other so he was just crying broke into tears and uh, and he was so appreciative of uh, that you know that little half an hour that guru maharaj gave to him and then uh just the day before the day we were leaving from uh, moscow to london moscow to london then uh, our drive from the place where we were staying to the airport was one hour so then guru maharaj called ask your wife to follow me in the same car then he talked to him as well as to the wife for one hour during the journey to the airport and as soon as we landed in the airport the wife came out and started crying we had done we have solved our problem that's it <laughs> problem is solved she said so she was very much appreciative as well so this is vaishnava seva this is real vaishnava seva you don't care about your time you don't care about time you know you don't care about your situation as long as your heart is there because this is the care is actually comes from the heart you don't need to have big certificates some degrees in order to care for devotees because that care ex actually comes from your heart so he has that his whole life is for that he has dedicated for to care devotees therefore middle of the night at you know 1:30 in the morning and sitting in a private room that's the only place people like to be you know i mean not not to be disturbed but sitting there he is even using that opportunity to you know speak to this devotee using every moment wherever possible to help other devotees so his entire life is molded in caring for devotees i'll tell you another experience while we were in um, calcutta apollo hospital one night and i was on the night shift i was just um, he was on the bed hospital bed and i was just sleeping next to him and that was around there was a lady a nurse from kerala her name was asha and she was on duty started from 7 in the evening and then she came to treat him and at one point uh, he had his infusion of uh, albumin going on and then around 10 o'clock she told me after guruma went to sleep she told me i will come in between just to check if the drips are going okay then around it was i think around 2:30 in the morning she came in to the room and i heard guruma was snoring he was snoring he was in a deep sleep and as soon as she came and she came in and she was checking the if the cannula and the i would tell if the drips are going okay and probably that has disturbed him and he just woke up and he woke up and you believe me or not within 30 second he asked so asha how many rounds you are chanting are you no 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 sorry so asha are you promised to chant because the the night before before you going to sleep he was preaching to her he was preaching to her about chanting because that was the first meeting so he was preaching to her about chanting and then here as soon as he woke up he asked her the first thing it was like within 30 second from a deep sleep he woke up within 30 second he asked her so asha you promised to chant you chant at least one round so it's it, it was like as if you put your computer on hibernation and then you open up it resumes is <laughs> you know from wherever you uh, left over you know so like that uh, that really amazed me you know because i was still coming out of my slumber you know like trying to put myself together but he was snoring at one point was snoring and then suddenly woke up and within 30 second how he could like remember her name he called her by name and then 
started preaching to her. So that was really amazing. <laughs> really amazing. So, so that's called Jeeva Doya. That is Jeeva Doya. That you care for other people. You know. And while, we were, while he was in ICU, this was in 2016. 2016. In the last two years, uh, starting from 2000, uh, March, March 2000, sorry, May 2015 till um, 2016. He went into ICU for almost three times. And pretty much in the last, the last two years he spent in the hospital, going into, in and out, in and out of the hospital, last two years. And he used every single opportunity to preach to people preach to the hospital staff, security guards, nurses, doctors, patients, like a lot of security guards in the hospitals in uh, Delhi, a lot of them they always come and ask for these clickers because it has become so famous that, that Swamiji is giving out some mantra. <laughs> so everyone, you know, they look forward to come and meet him and then they ask for these clickers. And it has become so famous, as I said, like, you know, devotees, uh, what do you call, we became so famous in that hospital too. We had a lot of good access into different, different departments, to many doctors. So he has touched and transformed a lot of people with his association and always used the opportunity to, pre to preach to many people. I remember once uh, while he was still in the ICU and uh, he was still uh, in the ICU, there was one patient who was just next to him. And the doctors have announced that uh, he may leave his body any time. So as soon as Guru Maharaj heard that, he just told one of the servants who was next to him that call the devotees, ask them to bring Bhagavad Gita right now. So then we rushed with Bhagavad Gita, Yamuna water, Vrindavandas, Mahap, garlands, whatever. Then he said, go and read it to him immediately. I mean, he doesn't even know who the patient was. He doesn't even know the name. He doesn't even know the name. But why he has to take so much of care for someone who is about to leave his body? This is called Jeeva Doya. This is called Jeeva Doya, real compassion. And there was another lady who was uh, on the other bed. Because I, I tell you, these ICUs, hospitals, are not a place for any normal people to visit. Because especially ICUs, like, Patients are, you know, with full of depression, full of depression, you know. As soon as you go in, you can see how it influences you so much. So this patient just next to him, she was like screaming whole night for two, three nights. And I was there and Guru Maharaj called this um, one of the nurse and he asked her, what's happening with that patient, you know, why she's uh, screaming so much. Then she said, the nurse said that, uh, well, she's in so much of pain and uh, despite whatever treatment that we are giving, it's not really working on her. So she's end up screaming like this. Then he said, go and tell her that I've been praying for her every day. This is what she said, he said. Then the nurse went and conveyed to that patient. So again, he doesn't even know who the patient, you know, that patient is. Doesn't even know the name, nothing. But yet, you have that compassion to care for the other people that you don't know. We hardly care for the people that we know very well. <laughs> but a real Vaishnava, a true Vaishnava means we, care, we don't see their social status, who they are, male, female, whether they are, whether they are rich, whether they are poor, always the heart goes for each and every single person. So this is real Jeeva Doya. And the other reason why I said, as I said, why we are so inspired to be with him and to serve him, though it, we know that it is physically challenging, mentally challenging, is because he even cares for us. I remember one, uh, Last, sep last uh, July, I had some sprain on my hand while we were in Tirupati. 
I sprained my shoulder. Then this devotee, uh, I, gen I mean, I, some, I rarely go and uh, serve him, do some physical service while I'm in India because we have a trained uh, team of devotees, caretakers who take care of him. And then, but now and then suddenly whenever they need some help, they'll call me. And once I went to help Guru Maharaj to try to lift him up from his bed to the wheelchair. And most of, the, most of the time it was him, Guru Maharaj, who reminded me about my hand, not even the servants, because though the servant knows that I have problem with my shoulder, but sometimes they just call for some help. But each time I go, it was Guru Maharaj who reminded me about my hand. Sometimes even I forget that I have such problems. But he always asks, are you okay? What about your hand? Will you be able to lift me? You know, like, that, that's the kind of like, uh, you know, care, you know. Though he has so many things in his mind, but he always like so specific. He goes precise into your problem. He asked, each time I went, he asked me. Even the servants forgot that I have a, I mean, I have my shoulder which is sprained. But it was him. Each time I went, he, he was making sure that if I'm okay, to lift him up. So th that is the kind of like, you know, though we know he's so busy, he has so many things in his mind, but he has, he's always remember about your problem. And those are the things, kind of things which touches us our heart, which inspires us, you know, to be with him. Though we know it is physically challenging, mentally challenging. And then, uh, about a month ago, there was a couple of, I mean, uh, there was a family who came from Dallas to Mayapur. And then they had their flight around two in the morning. And they have to leave Mayapur by uh, eight to get to the airport in Calcutta on time. Then Gurma went, they came, they paid obeisances, they left. And then around 11 o'clock at night, he just woke up. And then he called me, he said, Please call and tell them, tell, tell the devotees that someone has to sit next to the driver to make sure that he doesn't fall asleep. Keep talking to the driver. He, he already went to sleep. By 10 he was already on the bed sleeping. Then just middle of the, he just woke up from the middle of the sleep and then he just asked me to do this. So when I called the devotees, the devotee was like, Shh, so emotionally <laughs> touched. Because, you know, this is the kind of, little, little things, you know, this is called Vaishnava Seva, you know, that, as I said, this care, it comes from the heart. When you really care for devotees, you don't need to be like, you know, giving them big, big philosophies or uh, uh, try to impress anyone with, uh, uh, you know, different, different fancy ways, but a little care, little personal care to devotees, that's enough to win their heart. Little personal care. And this we see in his daily lifestyle. Once he was very sick, very, he had a high fever. This was in Mayapur. High fever. And we, that was around two in the afternoon, and we put him on the bed. We gave him a paracetamol. And by 4.30, the fever subsided. Though he still had a mild fever, but it subsided to some great extent. Then he woke up, he said, I'm feeling so stuffy, I wanted to go out. We didn't know, and we also already closed the whole rooftop, not to allow anyone to come for darshan or disturb him. But somehow one Mataji, who's not even a disciple, she was a disciple of Nada Maharaj, somehow she sneaked in. <laughs> somehow, with despite so much of security, she sneaked in into the rooftop, and she was there. And as soon as Guru Maharaj came out of his room, this Mataji just came rushing towards him and started crying, telling all her problems. <laughs> he knew, he knew about her problem, but yet, he said, then I went to try to stop her from meeting him. He said, no, no, give me 20 minutes. Give me 20 minutes, I'll stick to the time. I need to meet her. Then he sat with her, talked to her, and then after that she was, you know, consoled and she left. So like that, you know, this all Vaishnava Seva, you know, you go beyond your, though knowing that you go through so much of pain, trouble, and uh, you yourself need so much of care, yet you go beyond your capacity, be, be beyond your limitations to care for others. This is what Krishna really sees. The reason why Krishna 
is providing him with so much of care because their whole life they have cared for other people. That's why devotees love them so much. Because generally people, those who are physically challenged or handicapped, they always take care from other people. They don't, they only, because they are bothered by the uh, condition, they become so conditioned, so much so, they don't think about anything else. They only think about themselves. That I'm like this, I'm, you know, they become so conditioned with their physical condition. The mind becomes. But here, though he takes so much of care, but he gives much more than what he takes. Just for, we had, we were in Russia for almost eight days. There was one Mataji who was, um, who was uh, assigned to take care of all the darshan with the devotees. So this Mataji, she took, a, she took note of, because she had people came to her, they gave their names to meet him, to meet Guru Maharaj. So she took note of all these people in her book and she wrote down what is their problem or the purpose of their darshan. And, in the, and finally, just before the day uh, we were leaving from uh, Moscow to London, she gave me the count that in the last eight days, Guru Maharaj met 272 different devotees. And that he spent minimum one minute with each person. Maximum five or 10 minutes. But minimum one minute with each person. So like that she gave a count. That's only those who went through her. 272 people. And normal people like us, even we don't do that. How many of us we really meet, I mean, how many devotees do we meet in a day, in a week? So he met 272 devotees, giving them minimum one minute. This is real Vaishnava care. Real Vaishnava care. So then why, you know, devotees are really running after him? Why they are so attracted to him? Why they are still going after him? Because you give, you give and you give and you give. You give care, naturally Krishna gives more and more and more. In care, you get more than what you give. When you give, you get more than that. That's actually care. Like as I said in these hospitals, these uh, uh, the security guards, because even they, you know, whenever we take Guru Maharaj from uh, his room to different, different uh, departments for scanning, for ultrasound, x-ray. So these security guards, whenever we pass, pass through them, you know, through different, different floors, they always come, pay obeisances, you know, pranams. And they always offer respect and they become so close to him. So much so, one time when we were trying to, uh, he was in the ICU for a long time, this was in 2015. He was in the ICU for a long time. And he was getting discharged after the one month stay in the ICU. And the ICU was in the second floor. I, it's called the liver ICU. And his room, the private room, was in the fourth floor. So when, uh, and all the, the whole hospital knows about his condition because so many devotees, visitors, and they always get the update about Guru Maharaj's condition from all the devotees, you know, they have their networks. So this one security guy, he came running towards the, from fourth, uh, from I think third floor, I think. He came running to the second floor. And he was like, I mean, seeing very like uh, nervous and uh, he was seen like very, in so much of anxiety. Then one of our devotees asked him, what happened, what happened? Swamiji, Swamiji kidar, Swamiji kidar. Tell me what happened, what happened? Then um, uh, he said, Swamiji, upar ja rahe, upar ja rahe. <laughs> because, Upar jare means they were trying to shift him from the second floor to the fourth floor. He thought Swamiji is upar jare, he's going, he's already leaving his body. <laughs> so he said, I, I heard that Swamiji is upar jare, upar jare, he's going. <laughs> so I came here to take his darshan, last darshan, I wanted to see him, I wanted to see him. <laughs> but then we told him, no, 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 upar jare means you're going to the fourth floor, <laughs> not to upar jare. <laughs> so like that. You know, like uh, how he has, you know, touched even the heart of so many ordinary people, like the security guards, you know. They have so much of love. 
and all this just you know by like as i said you know when we take him from one floor to another floor he sees the security guard say hare krishna you know they also respond hare krishna that little thing you know of just greeting someone because who generally who greets the if you seen people greeting the security guards in india hardly nobody even care for them actually hardly anyone cares for the security guards you know in india especially but here sometime he pass through he you know he greets them hare krishna and they greets you know respond to him back hare krishna so that little greeting hare krishna touch the heart you know this is called jiva doya how you attract people towards krishna you be compassion to them the real compassion and you attract them toward krishna so like that wherever he goes his personal touch even like these little greetings he transforms the heart of people and all this is possible with the mercy of shila propat and the previous acharyas this is how as i said earlier that how this is the principle of chaitanya mahaprabhu nama ruchi uh, vaishnav seva jiva doya and all our previous acharyas all the way down to shila propat and all the our gurus in iskon everyone is practicing the same uh, principle nama ruchi jiva doya and vaishnav seva and because i'm with uh, guru maharaj very closely so i'm seeing this in his daily life he lives by this principle i remember i wrote down um, i have a small uh, excerpt from his lecture about vaishnava care since our theme today is on vaishnava care i'll read this to you because i don't want to miss even a single word i want you to listen to this very carefully this happened he gave his this lecture on 24th may 1999 in mayapur so in that lecture he described about this he said that there was one lady who came to meet him in moscow and she was complaining to him that nobody was caring for him and that she wants to leave his con just because nobody bothers about her and she's not even a disciple and she and he he was uh, describing how after listening to her that nobody caring for her that she wants to leave iskon so gurma is told and this is what he told he said i told her that i care about you i may not be your spiritual master i may be your spiritual uncle but i care about every devotee in iskon i do not want any devotee to leave and i want every devotee is well cared for but i know i have limited capacity i will definitely will try to help as per my capacity and the next day she came back and she said she feels better and doesn't want to leave his con shila propad wanted everyone in our society to be cared for and if somebody comes to me i can't just turn them away i just cannot and i cannot do that to anybody and shila propad never turned me away he asked me to care for people this is what he said in his lectures so because today's theme is vaishnava seva or seva means caring it's in one sense so this is his mood so this is mood of you know the devotees srila propad everyone so this is the mo- same mood that we should also imbibe caring for devotees taking care of the other devotees and especially in this case despite his challenges physical challenges how is going beyond his capacity going you know like sacrificing his own comfort just to care for other people that's why krishna is giving him more and more and more care because as long as we just think about ourselves you don't see anything else you will suffer within ourselves <laughs> people think i should need care nobody is caring for me but if we should come out of that that though people don't care for me i should go and care for others then naturally you will see so much of care coming to you i have experienced this i remember once uh, this was probably in 1996 if not mistaken uh, every year in australia we used to have this ratha yatra festival 31st december they'll have this new year eve ratha yatra in gold coast australia that's in the state of uh, uh this brisbane actually 
and on the 1st january we used to have ratha yatra in kuala lumpur malaysia so what gurma does he attends this ratha yatra on the 31st january night that ratha yatra starts at 9 9 o'clock at night and it goes till 12 midnight and then people celebrates their they welcome their new year it's a big festival huge you know new year in australia sydney uh gold coast it's a big f- uh, event millions of millions of people gathers there from all around the world and <clears throat> and he travels he attends his radha yatra festival from 9 till 12 and he goes to bed by around by the time he goes to bed it w- it will be around 2 in the morning then he wakes up by 4 he takes the 7 o'clock flight from this place in kulangata airport he flies to sydney kulangata to sydney sydney to singapore singapore to kuala lumpur that's his regular route is scheduled towards the end of the year so one year this was probably in 96 or 97 i can't remember so he came and landed in uh, Kuala Lumpur airport that was on the 1st January around 5 in the evening he came out of the airport he came alone without any servants he came out pushing his own uh, that uh, trolley he came out and he said i'm starving and i'm so tired i need some prashadam right now and we could hardly hear him out actually because he was so weak because of that uh, festival in kolan i mean uh, in uh, radha yatra in australia then so much of travel all the way to kuala lumpur and we could hardly hear him because he was so weak no prashad i don't know what happened probably they forgot to give him the prashadam so he came out the first thing he said i'm starving feed me he said <laughs> then we quickly took him to a nearby hotel he took shower and then on the way in the car we fed him prashadam and he took his prashad and slept off and probably uh within uh, that was like 45 minute journey from the airport to the ratha yatra spot and when we went very close to the chariot he woke up because of the kirtan then he came out as if like normal as if like he's super energetic fresh he just came out then started doing kirtan with the devotees he was like completely normal doing kirtan and you know dancing and probably uh about 2 hours later then he called me he pulled me to side and he said i'm having a terrible headache go and check if my bp medicine is there so then i went and there was a car which was following behind the chariot so i checked on all his luggage and he said i went back and told gurma gurma there's no medicine i cannot find the medicine then said no you go and check here i went back i checked still it wasn't there i came back i told him he said no you go and check here so like that then finally i checked end up checking his entire luggage and i couldn't find the medicine and he'll come back and then each time i went he like he comes to me and then he tells me that you know go and find here go and find there but then he goes back among the i mean among the devotees and you know he smiles at them talks to them kirtan as if like nothing is happening but then he comes back and tells me i'm having a terrible headache i need this medicine now then at one point he said okay at least go and see if we can get some medicine from the pharmacy so i went to the pharmacy and the doctor said you cannot just simply come in and ask for this medicine who is this for and then he said at least i want if you don't have a prescription at least i want to see the patient then i went and told gurmal then he quickly because it was in the main street so he quickly took a, you know like sneaked out from the crowd and he took the medicine so i noticed how you know like though he was going through so much of headache he said terrible headache yet he doesn't show off to the devotees goes and you know try to inspire them share the map as much as possible you know just to what they call inspire them as much as possible give his association and then from there we went to the hall he said i wanted to go and take a little rest before the chariot reaches the main hall then we went to the hall then he was looking for a place to lie down and by the time i went to look for a place he was already sleeping on the floor he just took his chadar <laughs> he found a small room a corner 
He put his child on the floor. He was sleeping and snoring terribly after taking the medicine. And he woke up after like 30 minutes. Then he participated in the kirtan and also gave a class for one hour. So like that, this are the, you know, I'm just giving few examples of how, you know, for us, even a small headache or, you know, some uh, difficulties with our health, we take a long break from our spiritual life or, you know, we try to slow down our spiritual activities. But here, we can see an example of how, despite you face all these challenges, health issues, challenges, you go beyond that, go beyond that and you give yourself to others, you care for others. Then you see Krishna gives you more and more care and love. That's Vaishnava care. Hare Krishna. Hey, go on. Okay, for how long more? Because Maharaj is also sitting here. I don't know if, if, if is there any schedule for Maharaj or? Okay. Okay. Okay, so thank you very much. I hope that has benefited you all to some extent on the theme of Vaishnava care. I just uh, explain on the practical side how to apply the Vaishnava or how to take care of the Vaishnavas. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.